The whole student loan program has become a national disgrace. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. The idea of getting more and more kids into college has been universally popular for decades. College graduates make more money than non-graduates, the reasoning went. A degree was a ticket to a better life. The nation benefited enormously from having a better educated populace as the world became ever more complex. But college is expensive. And so starting in the 1960s, Washington pushed programs to help young people and their parents get money to finance a higher education. Making it easier to get a loan was a big part of this effort. Talk about good intentions gone very bad. All this government and government subsidized assistance fueled an astonishing rise in the cost of college and graduate school. Sticker prices rocketed up at several times the rate of inflation. Where did all this extra money go? Administrative bloat. Most institutions of higher learning have become infested with a bewildering array of deans, fancy buildings, and other extravagances. All this was avoidable. Purdue University, under its recently departed President Mitch Daniels, kept tuitions flat for a decade and still enriched its educational offerings. But the prudent approach of Purdue is very much an outlier, which is why student debt has ballooned to $1.8 trillion and has become a political football. The scandal here goes beyond size. Colleges and government have made loans so easy to get. Truth in lending here is almost non-existent. Start with lumping loans as part of a, quote, student package, end quote. A loan is an aid or a grant or a scholarship. It is a legal obligation. A short film on student loans the college-bound youngsters and their parents must watch is called Student Loans, Do the Math, explanation mark. It's put out by izzit.org, I-Z-Z-I-T dot org. Full disclosure, I'm involved with Izzit on a project. This film carefully lays out all the facts that government and colleges don't. For example, say a young scholar takes out a loan of $10,000 a year for four years. That adds up to a $40,000 obligation, right? No. With interest, the actual obligation is over $47,000. What's to be done? Start with the kind of transparency in these loans that are routine with credit cards and mortgages. Schools should have to guarantee a portion of their loans their students take on. Right now, they pocket the money with no obligations, and the student holds the bag. Also, in fairness, the current law that makes it almost impossible to discharge student loan debt as part of a personal bankruptcy should be changed. Certainly, a new law can guard against the abuses that led to this virtual prohibition in the first place. And let's rid ourselves of the idea that everyone must go to college. Taking time to learn a real high-in-demand skill would be a boon to millions of high school graduates and the economy. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Oh,